I want to pray and then we'll get started. Lord, I just thank you for another beautiful day. Thank you for bringing us all here this morning. God, I thank you for the words that you've laid on my heart. And that you'll just let just those words come out of my heart this morning, out of my mouth. If I say anything that you don't want me to say or I say wrong, I just pray that you'll fix it before everybody hears it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, people, y'all need to get ready. <laughs> Jesus is coming back, or you're going to die, and you're going to meet him before he comes back. I'm going to do something a little different this morning. I'm going to go ahead and open up the invitation. And if any time during this sermon you feel the Holy Spirit speaking to you, you come up here. we got our pastors right up here at the front, and they'll be glad to pray with you. Because there's been times when... It, People have been speaking and preaching, and I've had the Holy Spirit moving in me and want to come up here and pray, but don't feel like it's the right thing to do or something. But today it's okay if you feel led to do it. Now I've got something I'm going to do this morning as an illustration. We've, all of us, our days are numbered here on this earth, and we don't know how much time we've got. So i got some little timers, and everybody, i got some people picked out that's going to get one. But you don't know how much time you're going to have on your timer. You might have a long time. And you might just have just a few minutes. There you go, Cody. Now, when your timer goes off, you got to get up and walk to the back and sit back there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's going to illustrate you leaving this earth. You don't ever know. There you go, Bill. <laughs> y'all laughing, y'all might be next. <laughs> no, I've already asked these people, so I didn't didn't mess with them too bad. There you go, Gary. Last one's mine. Okay. I just I love how God works things together and just keeps building on everything. When Dr. Uh, Draper was here a few weeks ago and spoke, and some of the numbers he gives about 113,000 people in Wilson County. Tell me he lives here. He said 50% of those are unchurched. So that means that way less than 50%, in my opinion, of that to go to church are even saved. So we've got a, we've got a big mission field. There's, there's 42 Southern Baptist churches in Wilson County. And so that means there's 42 pastors. Should be. And I've got it up here. You take... If each one of these pastors spoke to one person a day, just shared the gospel with them, it takes seven and a half years for them to share the gospel with everybody in Wilson County. If we could get a thousand people out of these 42 churches to do this, share with one person a day, 113 days, we'd have all of Wilson County. Amen. If you work in Davidson County, Rutherford County, some other county around here, we'd already be working on them too if you work with them. And some crazy people might even talk to two people a day. Who knows? You don't know. But when is Jesus coming back? What if he came back today? You need to be ready. Jesus is coming or you're leaving. One or the other. I mean, ain't no, there's no other way around it. And I know there's Christians in this church and all over this earth that are ready for Jesus to come back and they're ready to go to heaven. But what about the rest of this world? I mean, there's a whole lot of other people out there. Where would they go? The Bible says if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you're going to die and go to hell. 
And, and these people aren't ready to die. They aren't ready for Jesus to come back. A lot of them don't even know about it. And it's, and it's our job to tell them. I'm going to read, these, read some verses from 2 Peter chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 1 through 7 first. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. First of all, you must understand, in the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming he promised? Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the word, also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. In these verses, it talks about God's words and the words that God's spoken over the years. I mean, just think, he didn't have, there was nothing, and he spoke it into existence. He didn't have to lift one finger to do anything. He spoke it every bit. And out of all, all these promises that God has made in the Bible, how many of them have come true? All of them. Well, what about the ones that hadn't happened yet? Are they going to come true? Yes. There's not a doubt in my mind that they're not ever one going to come true. Everything he said in this book is going to happen. And just because it hadn't happened yet doesn't mean he forgot. He doesn't forget. But I want to read verse 5 here again. This is talking about the people of the world. But they deliberately forget that long ago by God's words, God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. They deliberately forget. They forget it on purpose. That, <clears throat> that God's word spoke all this into existence. And one of these days he's going to say a word and it's all going to be over with. And that's when Jesus is going to come back. And I want to know, are you ready to meet God face to face today? I mean, it's going to happen. And does this excite you or does it scare you? You need to, need to think about this, folks. I'm going to read verses 8 through 10 now. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. God's time and our time is not the same. It's, it's a big difference. When you've got eternity, a few minutes, a few hours, a few days, that's not anything. It's not anything at all. And it says here, a thousand years is like a day. I mean, our little minds can't even imagine a thousand years. And a day is like a thousand years. And I kind of put it into, into the way my little mind works here. You feel good or doing something you enjoy, time flies. To me, if I'm working on something, if I'm building something, time flies. If I'm at the racetrack, time flies. It seems like, man, it's, it's already over with. If I feel bad, don't feel good, I'm sick, or doing something I, I don't enjoy doing, time just stands still, like going shopping. It's like, God, it's, you don't think the day's ever going to end if you've got to go go somewhere shopping. That's the way it feels like to me. But I want y'all to think about something for a minute. In heaven, a thousand years will be like one day. I mean, it'll, you, I can't imagine us getting up there and we're just going to walk around. Just, just amazed. Can't, can't even begin to imagine what it's going to be like. But one day in hell, it's going to be like a thousand years on earth. One day. It's going to be like a thousand years. So where do you want to spend it? Where do you want your friends and your family to spend it? Your neighbors? Folks, that's, that's our job to share with them. And we've got to just share with them. 
and we got to decide ourselves before it's too late. And then it talks about God's patience here in verse 9. And I can't imagine being patient with somebody the way God is for one year, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years of their life. He keeps sending people to them to speak to them. He keeps sending people to speak to them, share with them, and they just keep turning away, turning away. I don't have that kind of patience. I have a lot more now than I did that I'm a parent. And I, and I think that's the way, the way God looks at us as His kids. He's going to keep giving us chances and keep loving us and speaking to us because He loves us and He wants us to, to follow Him. But verse 10 here, you need to get ready because something's going to happen. Something unbelievable and unimaginable that no movie or no person's mind or anything has ever been able to dream.